This is the Paracay Podcast, proudly brought to you by major sponsor Jack's Pale Ale, exclusively available at Parramatta Leagues Club, Shannon Cooney from Glenmore Park Realty, Bo Cook from Loan Market, BTZD, the official apparel partner of the Paracay Podcast, and the Parramatta Times, the official media partner of the Paracay Podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Paracave Podcast. And now over to your host, Troy Warner, broadcasting live from the world famous Paracave. And yes, hello and welcome back to another cracking episode of the Paracave Podcast. Troy Warner here, and this is the interview style based podcast. And it is with a former Gold Coast Titans player. And also a Parramatta Eels player. But not only that, he is a great bloke. He always has time for the fans. I've met him a couple of times now, both in Queensland and at Combank Stadium as well, where he does a little bit of Parramatta Eels ambassador work. But he's also doing some great stuff at the charity called What Ability as well, which we talk about in the podcast. So some great stuff there. And he also has his own podcast himself called Keegan and Company. And, of course, that means that it is Mr. Keegan Hipgrave. Now, as I said before, he played for the Eels and the Titans, had to retire early from Rugby League due to concussion, uh, a major uh, some concussions that he suffered during his career got medical advice there that the best thing for him would be to retire from rugby league and retired at a young age as well so if we talk about that during the chat as well we talk about his junior football as well representing Queensland and also the Australian schoolboys obviously we talk about his playing career and we talk about his, what ability and his podcast as well so some last thrown in as well great little story there i'm sure you will enjoy it um and this would not be at all possible without the help of the sponsors major sponsor jack's pale ale exclusively available at Parramatta leagues club bo cook from loan market shannon cooney from glimmer park realty bt zd team where the official apparel sponsor of the paracave podcast and the Parramatta times the official media partner of the Paracave podcast more details about the sponsors and the Paracave podcast merchandise which you can now purchase after the chat with Keegan now this will also be released as a YouTube video as well so subscribe to the YouTube channel the Paracave podcast where you'll find some um, uh, many more little videos from interviews previously and also full episodes of the interviews that i've had with players via zoom video chats as well so check that one out subscribe to that one if you prefer to watch it uh check that one out as well so more details about the sponsors and the paracave the paracave podcast merchandise after the chat with keegan so obviously that's enough of me talking you don't want to hear me you want to hear keegan's rugby league story uh so that's enough of me talking so as hindy says get a beer coffee whatever you want sit back relax and enjoy and let's get straight into it g'day guys it's keegan hipgrave here uh i used to play for the gold coast titans um Recently uh, retired from the Parramatta Eels as well. Um, I was medically retired due to concussion. Uh, at the moment, I'm doing a deep dive into mental health uh, with my podcast, Keegan and Company. Uh, I'll be looking at doing a, a deep dive into psychology and, and brain health and also mental health. So uh, really excited to have this chat with uh, Troy on the uh, on the Paracave podcast. And as you heard from his intro, my guest today on the Paracave podcast played at the Gold Coast Titans and also at the club that I love, the Parramatta Eels. And he's currently doing some great things in the mental health space with What Ability. Also has his own podcast, Keegan and Company. Welcome to the Paracave Podcast, Mr. Keegan Hipgrave. 
Troy, how are you, mate? Not too bad. Thank you very much for joining me today. Now, growing up on the Gold Coast, did you find rugby league or did rugby league find you? Mate, I think um, I think rugby league found me. Yeah, my my dad used to play rugby league. He was he was pretty good until he was um, I think probably at the back end of oh, early you know, early twenties. He had an ACL reconstruction, and back then the the surgeries weren't that great. So I think he just went without it. But no, he he loves rugby league. My whole family loves rugby league. So uh, I think I was destined to play rugby league. Um, growing up on the Gold Coast, we're obviously surrounded by beautiful beaches. So it was either surfing or, or rugby league, and I was a much better rugby league player than I was a surfer. So um, yeah, mate, I I, I love both. It did, who was the team that you supported back in the day? Before the Titans came in, I supported the Brisbane Broncos. Okay. Yeah. Um, so before I made my debut with the Gold Coast Titans, I was in the Brisbane Broncos, uh, sort of like junior development, um, elite uh, elite development pathways sort of squad. Uh, so I love, you know, guys like Corey Parker, Sam Thiday, Darius Boyd, uh, those kind of players because um, obviously followed the Broncos. And then I signed my first contract at 17 with the Brisbane Broncos. Um, so I had four years there. And that was really cool, mate. I got to go into a, an NRL system with guys who I actually looked up to um, and looked up to and respected and, and then got to spend every day with them and, and realise that, um, you know, we put these guys on a pedestal, but at the end of the day, they're just they're just human beings like the rest of us, right? Um, yep. So, yeah, mate, I was, I was a Broncos fan until the Titans came in. Um, when the Titans came in, I obviously grew up on the Gold Coast. I, I started going for the for my hometown team. Yeah. Ah, nice. Well, before your start with the Brisbane Broncos, you uh, made the Queensland under 18s, 16s and 18s representative sides and – Mark Tukey was your coach in one of those. Tukey, yes, he, he was, he, yeah. He named you as uh, captain as well of Queensland. Um, he said that you were the best kid he's seen at 18. Uh, and you also had Anthony Seabold as well as coach. So I'm assuming two different sort of coaches there. Yeah, that's right, mate. Um, Tukes, it's actually really cool because I'm obviously still an ambassador with uh, with the Parramatta Eels and, and get to do a lot of speaking engagements and engaging with fans and, and sponsors now, which I'm really grateful for. And I get it. I do have a lot of crossover with Tukes. Yep. Um, you know, we went to Magic Round in Brisbane earlier this year, and it's really cool to reconnect uh, with with Mark. Um, he was obviously my my coach back in, in under sixteens Queensland, and um, man, he's a he's a pretty tough player. I remember coming him uh, coming into the side. I like to play a, a, an aggressive, you know, pretty tough style of footy, um, especially back when I was a kid, um, yeah. that led into the Gold Coast Titans. And um, and he just embodied all of that. So we got on really well, um, was lucky enough to captain the side. Uh, and then Anthony Seabold was a little bit different, a little bit more reserved and a bit more methodical in, in his thinking and coaching. But uh, at the end of the day, when you are in a Queensland jersey, I can't speak for New South Wales, <laughs> but when you are in a Queensland jersey, it's uh, – it's you put your body on the line. You'll do anything for your mate. Um, probably do anything for your mate. That's something that we really lent on in those camps. Um, but yeah, mate, they were cool experiences. They were really cool experiences. And then to see, you know, the way Anthony Anthony's career's gone, and and to you know, coach an NRL side is huge. So um, yeah, mate, it's, it, it was cool to have both those guys um, involved in my junior development. And then another huge honour would be to play for the Australian Schoolboys as well, and. Geez, you had some pretty fair names in that squad. I mean, there was uh, Nat Butcher, Connor Tracy, um, Jacob Host, and Ray Stone, and and Latrell Mitchell as well. It's a pretty handy side. It was cool, mate. Yeah, that that um, that schoolboys trip was that the playing the Australian schoolboys was my goal from when I was a kid. Right, okay. like I yep. could see, you know, you probably would see it as well. You see, or you look back on old schoolboys teams. And look at the guys who went on to play in the NRL. It's pretty much like if you can make the Australian schoolboys side, you're on a good track to play NRL. Yeah. And I think something like 20 out of the 24 guys that played in my Australian schoolboys team went on and played NRL. You know, yeah, you, you wow. spoke guys like Matt Butcher, who who was one of my best mates in the cam, you know, Latrell Mitchell, Connor Tracy, um, Jaden Braley, like 
these these guys who you know are going on and having amazing careers sure, um so yeah mate that was that was a goal i remember i had i had it written up on my mirror i still you know write things on my mirror as you guys you can see behind me um i had like the australian team like wrote written up on my mirror from i don't know when i was 15 16 and and i think i did put probably a, a lot of pressure on myself to, to make that team um but i was just man i was i was hungry i was i was eager i was um i was a bit young and probably a little bit dumb as well but yeah <laughs> man, I, I i got there in the end and it was a cool trip we did six weeks tour of england and france um you know, we had a couple, you know, intermediate tests. Like we got to play the Wigan under twenty side um, back when we were seventeen, eighteen. So we we're playing a couple of years up. Yeah, wow. Uh, and then we played two tests against the England side, and then two tests against the French side. Uh, so, mate, that was a wild experience. It was, it was really cool. Yeah, for sure. Well, we see yourself now in the mental health space, and we've seen in the last couple of weeks Latrell copping a little bit of heat in the media. Um, and not only in the media, but from fans as well. Um, what sort of an impact do you think this is having on Latrell's mental health at the moment? I'm not sure. Like, I mean, I haven't spoke to Latrell about it. I think he's probably been through this type of stuff, you know, multiple times yeah. now. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's so tough for a player to not feed into this type of stuff. Like when I was playing, I was like, yeah, I didn't, didn't really have, I don't think I was that high profile. You know, I think I flew under the radar pretty well. Um, but guys like Latrell who, who are role models and icons in this space, like I don't see how it's fair for, you know, fans who, you know, I get it. I get they're passionate, but I just don't think it's fair for them to take their own, you know, take their own stuff and put it out on social media. And, and mate, to be honest, like, the boys, the guys who play footy, they're just normal people. At the end of the day, like they're not, they're not superhumans. They they feel the brunt of of any scrutiny just as much as anyone else. Yeah. Um. So I don't think it's fair to be like to answer your question. I don't think it's fair. Um. I don't I don't know how Latrell's acting. I don't know how um he's taken you know this this on board. Um. But mate, it's just it's just the way it is. And I, and I suppose it's what we sign up for. At the, probably at the end of the day, it's what we sign up for. You know, we're, we are in the public eye, and and we are you know. You know, we are seen to be doing some certain things. So yeah, mate, he's he's involved and yeah, I'm not I'm not too sure how he's reacting, but I like at the end of the day, like from where I come from, I I want to put I'm obviously the boys first. I, I hope I hope that he's going well with his mental health because um mate, it is important at the end of the day. Yeah, definitely. And uh we wish him all the best as well. Uh moving forward. Now you as you said before, you started off with the Brisbane Broncos, uh in their NYC sides, and then you signed with the Gold Coast Titans. And you make your debut in round 26 of the 2017 season against the Roosters at the old SFS. Uh, what stands out for you and was first grade everything you thought it was going to be like? Yeah, it was. Like, after making the Australian schoolboys, that was my first major goal. And then the second major goal was playing in the NRL. Um, I signed, like I said, I signed my first major contract at 17 with the Brisbane Broncos. Uh, I went through probably a string of injuries. Um, I, had to, I ended up tearing my hamstring about five times when I was 19 years old. Yeah, wow. uh, obviously, yeah, it ties into a bit of... Um, you know, got some traits like resilience after stuff like that. Um, but, mate, that was tough. Like, it was... Yeah, I always say, like, if it were, you know, when I was 19, obviously young and, you know, pretty impressionable young kid, just, like, was so eager to play in the NRL and just wanted to do everything. And and I probably rushed my return back, when, you know, when I was doing my hamstrings because I wanted to play in the Australian under-20 side. I went, you know, I was 19 years old. I thought I was going to make my NRL debut in that year, or if not, if I was 20. Um, but anyway, I had a string, of kin- a string of, you know, hamstring tears and then, um probably realised that, um, you know, the Brisbane Broncos had a really good side and, and probably realised that I probably wasn't going to make my debut in the next couple of years. Okay. I was behind a few crew. And to be honest, mate, probably just a little bit impatient. Um, if I had my time back, I, you know, I probably would have done a few things differently. But, um, yeah, I was probably just a little bit impatient and, and, and I saw an opportunity at the Gold Coast Titans to play in the NRL. And, you know, had conversations with the club. And, and this was mid-year. So this okay. was, you know, yeah. mid-year 2017. Um, and I thought, wow, this could this could be a really cool thing. Like, I grew up on the Gold Coast, so going back to the Gold Coast back to make home. my debut could be a pretty pretty cool thing to do. 
Um, and so I did. You know, I went back to the Gold Coast Titans. I um, I got my hamstrings right. I was back playing great. I was back surfing with mates. I was back playing playing footy with good. guys who I went to school with, like um, yeah, like Kane Elgy and 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 Carl Lawton, who's who's a really good friend of mine, and then also guys who I looked up to, ex Palm Beach guys like Kevin Proctor and and Ryan James and and those type Will you know, Will Matthews, these these guys who have had great careers. So I was back enjoying myself, like yeah. I was I was really and I was playing really good footy. Uh, and then yeah, man, I got to make my NRL debut at the at the end of the you know, last round of the season. Um, I think I was only gonna. I think I was only supposed to play ten minutes at the at the back end of the game or or either side of half time, uh, and I ended up playing like sixty minutes. Yeah, just wow. really a full game. Injury. Yeah, it was a cool game, mate. I remember I remember coming up against Jared Aurea Hargraves, and still to this day, <laughs> he's one of the hardest men that I've had to play against. I remember just being young and competitive, and and um, well, probably a little bit of a chip on my shoulder. I'm just gonna, I'm just going to go out and and bang and, and try and put some big collisions on and, and to, to take some big runs. And, and Anthony, Anthony LaFranchi was actually our, um, he was like our um, uh, PDM, like a uh, player development manager. And he sits on the sideline and he said, Keith, like whatever you do, like don't blow out too early because we might need you <laughs> later on. <laughs> so I ended up and I just, yeah, took it on board, but I still went, still went hard. And um, yeah, mate, got, um, I actually, mate, I actually got suspended that like my first game. I put a late shot on um, Jake Friend. And so my first NRL game, I think I got like a match suspension. So it's pretty much summed up my NRL career as well. <laughs> well, uh, the next year, against the Rabbitohs in round 14. Um, you mentioned before, a bit of aggression, a bit of competitiveness. Uh, you got sin bin twice in that game. What, what happened there? Was that just the competitiveness and the and the aggression? Well, that's the thing. Like, If you go back and look at the game, the penalties weren't for anything like illegal or grubby or anything like that. They were pretty much just the third. You know when you get the third penalty in a row? Okay, then, like, for the same thing. It yeah. happened to me twice, you know, like, and it was just for staying on too long or like okay. wrestling too much on the ground or didn't letting them up early enough. And they were the most minute things. And I remember just being so frustrated with myself, not for anyone, not not with anyone else, not with the referees. I was just frustrated with myself and I ended up coming in. I ended up kicking a chair and and that little clip went viral on <laughs> socials. And I was like, you know, a crazy rugby league player who can't keep his emotions in check, which was probably a little bit true um, when I was that young. Um, but yeah, mate, we, we learned from those experiences. And mate, I, I obviously like to play an aggressive style of footy, um, probably to my detriment a little bit now with, with you know, retiring from concussion. But, um, yeah, I like, to, I like to play aggressive style of footy. You know, all my coaches growing up, they encouraged that, you know. So I would I would listen to guys who I respected, all the guys who who I looked up to played an aggressive style of footy. So guys like, guys like you know, Corey, uh, not Corey, well, obviously Corey Parker, but guys like uh, Paul Harrigan. Paul Harrigan, um, he's obviously, he's a really good friend, like family friend of mine. Um, we see a holidaying every year together. And he's not only one of the best players in the NRL, well, in the NRL, right? You know, captain, you know the new, excuse me, the New South Wales team, captain of the Newcastle Knights, played in the Australian team, was respected by everyone, yep. and but played a really aggressive style of footy. Like I remember that you, you probably you probably know when um, him and is it Mark uh, Carroll, Mark Carroll did the runoff yep. and then they both knock each other out. I remember always visualizing that and 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 he said so he was someone who i looked up to because he was an aggressive style of player of footy and i really liked that but he was also the best bloke off the field like people like and 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 everyone i speak to like all of my family friends all of my grandparents you know friends who knew the harrigans really well he's the best bloke in the world like yeah. he would come over and play touch footy with us on the sand for hours on end you know we go up to the crescent head country club and and he'd you know would be looking after me and and some of the other boys and we'd be trying to wrestle him yeah. and he, but he's just yeah you know, he's just the best bloke um so i had a lot of respect for him um but yeah mate i reckon there was a few guys who i looked up to and i think that's where that sort of aggressive style of footy came into play yeah no, chief harrigan was, certainly was one of my favorite players growing up and yeah. Hopefully one day I'll get the opportunity to interview him for the podcast because that'll be yeah. awesome. Now I've got a, a listener question from a B Hipgrave. And oh, I, 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 is he, I'm is he really? Yeah, from the Gold Coast actually. Oh, I'm assuming that's your that's your dad, and uh, uh, he wanted to ask um, about your skydiving and. <laughs> 
swapping shoots with your best mate and the first one didn't open. What's going on there? That sounds a bit scary. No, yeah, the old, the old boy, Billy, he's, he's, he's right into his social media now, so nothing can get past him. <laughs> no, nah, I was, um, mate, when I was younger, I had this, I was just young and dumb, and I, and I mate, if, if I could, you know, take the brain I have now to take it back, I would 100%. <laughs> but I was into riding motorbikes and, and, and skydiving. Like, I remember when I started riding motorbikes when I was at, um, at the Brisbane Broncos and Josh McGuire rode his one, used to ride his motorbike in as well. Yep. I remember there was, and this is when Wayne Bennett was coaching. This okay. was, this was one, my first NRL preseason. I remember riding in, me and Josh both rode in and at the start of every session we would all sit around and I'm an 18 year old kid, you know, had no business riding a motorbike. I hadn't, hadn't done anything in the game just yet. And then Wayne pretty much just looked at everyone in the, in the, in the group, like the whole squad of 30. And he's like, who's effing motorbikes outside? And I'm like, oh, it's mine. And he's like, mate, you better F and sell that or you won't have a job here. And I was like, oh, I'm psych. And anyway, that was the end of my motorbiking career. Okay. Uh, fast forward, I still I still wanted to skydive and I wanted to be a bloody skydiving instructor or whatever I wanted to do. So I went through um, went through and did my course, you know, became a qualified single like solo jumper. I couldn't jump with other people, but I could jump solo. Uh, and I remember there was this one time um, – me and a mate, we were in Byron Bay and we would jump out of the Byron drop zone and he, we, he, we, we just swapped parachutes for one for one go um, because it, it goes on, you know, weights and heights and everything okay. like that. And so he wanted to use my one because it was a bit bigger of a parachute, so therefore he would jump, like, go at a slower pace and I've been jumping for a little bit longer, so I went on a smaller shoot. Anyway, he, um, when, you, when you release your parachute, um, the parachute goes up and... And if it's beautiful, it's you, you're, you're flying and you've got no line twists and it's great. Yep. But on the odd occasion, one in every 10,000 jumps, you, you might get line twists. And in that case, you have to cut your parachute away, which is just pulling a cord and then pulling your reserve parachute. Anyway, my best one of my mates who I was jumping with, who I'd swap parachutes with, he got line twists oh. in, in, on one of the jumps. And, mate, this is a, it's a one in every 10,000 yeah. jumps, like very rare. He got line twists. He had to cut it away. Um, he had to use his reserve shoot. And if your reserve shoot doesn't work, then that's when you get in a fair bit of trouble. That's when you're in a fair bit of strife. More times than not, you know, your reserve pulls and you're fine. But anyway, very, very scary time for the both of us. Yeah, um, for sure. um, and then I think after, well, mate, after that, after that time, I stopped skydiving. So, so I think, <laughs> I think the story stands for itself. So, mate, I stopped skydiving. I, I, I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, I really liked the idea of um, pushing the boundaries of my own like mental state, not only physically, but from a psychology, like psychological point of view. And that was one of them. Um, jumping out of plane at 14,000 feet, it was pretty, pretty scary at, some, at times oh, at the bet. beginning. But pushing past that, mate, it was, um, it was a really cool life. I don't know. I want to say life lesson, but um, I think I did it pretty, but mainly because I enjoyed it, mate. Um, so, yeah, thanks <laughs> thanks to the old boy for passing that question in. <laughs> yeah, nah, for sure. He's a great bloke. I've met him a couple of times. And, um, yeah, surf club, yeah. yeah, yeah. Funny story. I was up visiting my auntie and she went down to show me the surf club and I'm just standing there and I hear, Troy, Troy. And and it was your dad you lay out to me. I think, what's going on here? So, he knew yeah. who I was, but uh, yeah, yeah. no, nah, great bloke. Well, at the end of the 2020 season, you signed with the club that I love, the Parramatta Eels. Um, why the change? What attracted you to the Eels? Mate, it was a, it was a few things. I um I had a really great conversation with Brad. Brad was probably the main driver for me. Um, I had a really great conversation with Brad in I think 2019. Um, this is when the club wasn't going so well. So I came down, um, the boys were training out of demountables. I think they just got on the wooden spoon. Um, you can, might be able to correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe the club was doing that well, but I just really loved, um, just how straight Brad was and he wouldn't beat around the bush and he would just okay. tell you the way it is. And, and I really loved that. And that sort of stuck with me. I ended up signing at the Gold Coast Titans because, you know, it was, it was a great deal. I wanted to stay with my friends and family and, and, and I really liked the lifestyle on the Gold Coast. Um, but in 2020, 2020, 2020, yeah, at the end of 2020, mate, I want, I realized that, um, you know, I probably wasn't going to play finals at the Gold Coast Titans. We weren't, we weren't going to make, you know, in, we weren't going to make, 
you know, the grand final, the semifinals or something like that. And, and I was looking at Parramatta and, you know, and they were a tough club. They had a really, they had a really core tough club and, and Brad was going well. And I think they just played semifinals. And I thought, well, if there's going to be a side where, you know, we might have the chance to play in a grand final or I might have a chance to play in the grand final, that's going to be it. Yeah. And so, um, I had a conversation with Brad and, and, and me and the coast, you know, we, we parted on mutual terms. And, and so, yeah, I went down, went down to Parramatta and, Man, it was great. Like I, I loved it. I remember my first first weekend I was there. I was, um, I think I had a couple of beers with Ray Stone and Sean Lane and Dill Brown, who ended up being, you know, a couple of my closest mates when I was at Para. Um, so yeah, mate, that sort of that sort of kicked it off on, on why I wanted to get involved. I love, I love Brad. Um, I love the fact that yeah, any any video session that we would do after a game is like, mate, this was like this was really great. Or like, mate, this is where you need to improve and this is where you need to get better. Uh, and I really loved that. And I think. You know, if I had my time back, I probably would have gone there a couple of years earlier, just in, in in terms of you know a development point of view. Is Brad the right coach for Parramatta moving forward? A lot of fans say he can't take us that next step and and win a grand final. He's got too many uh, mates in the team, so to speak, and it's not harsh <laughs> enough when the chips are down. No. Right. If you're if anyone's in the side or if not harsh enough, mate, Brad is pretty much as harsh as you can get. Like he will tell you how it is and it's constructive and he does it because he cares. Okay. Like he cares about the side. Um and that's mate, that's why he does it. Um so yeah, a hundred percent. Like but not many, not many coaches can say, you know, they've gone into a final series, you know, for the last couple of years in a row, you know, to, to go into the grand final last year is is huge, mate. Um and then to play semis the year before that, like it's um I mean, it's impressive. It sounds like the guys are pretty harsh, to be honest. The other the, the people who are riding in, but no, nah, man, I'm a, I'm a fan of Brad. I, I think Brad can take him to the next to the next level, 100. percent Yeah, well, let's hope so for sure next year now. But uh, that's yeah. okay. Uh, now, 2021 is a strange year. The comp ended up up in Queensland uh, due to the pandemic, and the Eels play the Panthers at Gold Coast, your your home ground, ex home ground. Um, and you suffer your career-ending concussion. Do you yep. remember anything about that game at all? Or have um, you only seen, like, replays, obviously? I've seen replays, mate. And I um, I want to say I remember, but I, I just don't think I do. I just, like, I can't... I don't... I want... Yeah, I guess the, I guess the probably honest answer is no. Like, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't remember that. Um, just for context, I, I, had, I had six months, you know, out... Um, with concussion in 2019, um, which turned to 12 months when you know the uh, the season went into the COVID lockdown. So I had 12 months off um, of playing footy, and then came back. You know for the sorry 20 yeah 2020 came back, um, played the whole season with the Gold Coast Titans before coming back to the Parramatta Eels. And mate, I was just I was hungry to play. Yeah, you know, I was hungry to play grade. I was I was hungry to play semis. Um, I was in a really good side at the Parramatta Eels with with you know some great players and that was you know you no need to tell you guys like how, who, what kind of players we got there but in the forwards it was, it was a tough you know it was a tough squad to make and mate I was I'd be happy just to be on the bench to be honest just you know we had um, Ice um, Ice was playing you know um, Regan Campbell Gillard Junior Bolo like these guys were insane and I yeah. really like you know learned a lot from them but yeah to answer your question mate. I don't remember that last game. I had I had three probably big concussions throughout that season. Um, was very you know had three big concussions and then probably a few smaller ones that um, you know sort of go under the radar a little bit. And in that last one, yeah, if you if you've seen the footage, I, I went to jam on to beat a pang guy um, on the line. We were defending our try line, and you know he's a big boy. I just came off second best mate, um, and you know and and end up having that whiplash and head hitting the back of the ground. And and for me, yeah, it was. Um, Obviously, it was out cold. If you if you ever see the footage, I, I was out, and they, you know, got me up and um, walked off. and And I thought going back into the sheds, obviously, I was a little bit rattled and a bit of a headache. But I thought, oh, I'm actually like, yeah, just a head knock. I got away with it, all right. And then um, after that was probably when I started to notice the symptoms of of the concussion. Um, I thought even the next day, I was like, yeah, I got a headache, but you know, pretty standard. I watched the footage back, and I was like, yeah, pretty pretty solid knock. So yeah, that'll be all right. And then. Couple of days go past, and I realise I'm not going to play the semi final. Like that's a probably pretty fair thing to do. So I think my season was done. Um, but mate, the 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 symptoms just started to hang around. You know, I had a probably had a headache for the next two months okay. afterwards. You know, yeah. when when you get three big concussions, you got to go back and and see you know independent neurologists and, and and stuff like that. So I had to go back and do the checks. Um, 
these are the checks that I did back in 2019 when I had six months off. Um, went through and then obviously like when with these tests with the neurologist, you know, it's a, it's a whole day of testing. It's not just like a, oh, how are you feeling? No, it's a, it's a whole day. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then you, you go through literacy, numeracy, um, problem solving, reaction times with the neuropsych and there's like a bunch of little tests that you can do. Um, and then I was telling him my symptoms, like my symptoms were emotion, emotional irritability. So I'd be really happy and then, and then really sad. And, and then, you know, my, I, my having problems with my memory. I was, I was forgetting a few things. I had the headaches. Um, even when I was trying to get back and train with the boys at the end of the season, I, mean, I couldn't even run without getting a headache. I try and do like a light run or a light gym session. I couldn't even get through that. And then even when I did get through that, I would just go back to the room and sleep for the rest of the afternoon. So these were the type of symptoms that I was feeling. And then I went and spoke to went and spoke to the neurologist and 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 we did all the tests and and he pretty much came back. He said in his professional opinion that I should um, medically retire from rugby league, which was um, which was obviously man, it's a pretty tough thing to hear. I um, yeah, I definitely. love rugby league. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I love it's rugby league. I, it's, mate, it's what I've been doing since I was you know eight years old professionally since I was six, seven, eight, you know, and so that was a tough, tough conversation. And, and I was having conversations with my partner at the time and, and my family and, and I wanted to, and, and, but to be honest, mate, I agreed with the neurologist. I, I agreed that, mate, I want to be, I love rugby league, but I want to be good when I'm 40 and 50 and 60 years old. And when I, when I have kids, you know, I want to be there for them yeah. one day. So, um, so yeah, he, he recommended it and I agreed with him, mate. Yeah. To, to answer your question. Yeah. So a uh, really easy decision in the end. Well, it's mate, that's the thing. It's easy like, but it's, hard, it's, sort of thing. It's easy but hard. Like it's, I could see it, and like I meant to be honest, I don't regret it. Like I, I don't regret it at all. There was, there's probably one time in the last two years where I thought, hey, did I make the right call? Like, should, like, could I go back and play? Um, that was when um, Origin, um, Origin 2022, okay. last year when I had a lot of mates who I played footy with was going on to make their state of origin debut. So guys like Paddy Carrigan, Ruben Cotter, Harry Grant, you know, Kalen Pong had been playing for a couple of years. These are guys who I grew up with, right? Yeah. Look at the look at the state of origin side now, back in the 16s and 80s, a lot of those guys went on to play. And these are really good friends of mine. And I thought, well, maybe I could get back and maybe there might be a chance that I could play. But then all the um, then all the stuff happened with Paul Green. Um, yeah. and Paul Green, you know, um, I don't need to talk about that too too in depth because I think a lot of us would probably know. Um, but mate, that that stuff scared me, and I thought, well, the whole reason why you know I stopped playing was so that I was right in the future. So mate, ever since ever since reading into that, I, I didn't I didn't want to come back and play yeah. at all. Like, I miss I miss the being around the boys. Don't get me wrong, I, I miss that competitive atmosphere and that competitive uh, environment. But I don't um I don't regret playing. I almost look at the boys, you know, having. <laughs> Big collisions now, and uh, yeah, it gives me yeah. chills. I don't think I've got that in me anymore. Yeah, no, nah, that's fair enough. Well, when you were uh, forced to retire medically, did you have any idea about what you were going to do post footy, or and how did what ability come up? Yeah, mate. Yeah, so that's a good question. I um, when I was going through my NRL career, my my parents were really big on having a plan B, right? So so I did a bachelor of business. Um, I was halfway through my MBA at the time and I, try, I tried a lot of different things when I was in footy, just like dipping the toe in. So, you know, I, I yeah, learned how to make coffees, you know, yeah. there, in the 2020 season, um, there was a bunch of us boys, uh, <laughs> myself, Sean Lane, uh, Tom Opacek, Ray Stone, Regan Campbell, get, we all went and got our barista license. Okay. So we all Interesting. Like, how to make like, coffees. Yeah, yeah. We're still terrible, mate. We're still making terrible <laughs> But I would just try things, you know, I would be on um, working like, you know, construction sites or labouring or like a mortgage brokerage. I just try a bunch of things just because, you know, those, I recognise that there's going to be one day where I'm not going to be playing professional footy and realising what you don't want to do is just as important as realising what you want to do. Well, that's what that's the way I thought about it. But, mate, I did all that stuff. And then even when I was medically retired, I still didn't know what I wanted to do, okay. to be honest. Like, yeah. I wasn't sure. I thought maybe I'll go down the firefighter route yeah. um, i applied for that i was halfway getting through that and then i caught up with a um a good friend who i went to school with at palm beach crumb and steve dresler steve actually was in the Parramatta system in the under 20s competition yep. he signed a two-year nrl deal uh but then was medically retired due to three acl knee reconstructions um and he started this disability support service that 
employs a lot of athletes as support workers. So mate, we, we, when I was medically retired and finished up, we just caught up as mates for a cup of coffee. And he's like, well, mate, what are you doing now? And I thought, oh, I'm going to go down this track. And he said, well, why don't you come do a day with us? Like, come see what we do. And we take people with disabilities out into the community to just have fun. And, and I did a day and I really enjoyed it, mate. I, I really, I really loved it. And, um, it tied into my way of helping people with sport. Um, so yeah, I, I, I did that. I, I got to – obviously, we employ a lot of athletes as support workers, so they asked me to come on full-time and to build, like, an athlete program. So I, you know, do presentations to a lot of AFLW, NRLW, netballers, um, development guys who are not on that top-tier yeah. contracts yet, so we yeah. give them flexible employment. Uh, but then also the top-tier guys who, you know, don't need to really do this as a form of income, but they do it because they love it and it's a really great way to give back. So that's like, you know, your dry arrows, and, you know, your Tavita Jr., Tavita, you know, um, and then guys like Tom Chavoyevich, Jake Chavoyevich, Benny, Carl Lawton, Sean Kepi, like these guys who, you know, they just do it because they love it. Yeah. Um, and that's that's sort of how that that came into into you know into the fold, I guess. Ah, nice. And now you've got your Keegan and Company podcast as well. It's only just started up, four episodes in. Uh, what what made you decide to do a podcast? Was that just like an extension of what you're doing now? No, so mate, the the what are the the ment- so what a uh, Keegan and Company is a mental health and sport podcast. So that sits to the side of what ability. So what ability is my um, I guess my job, it's yep. my form of employment. Um, but mate, I'm really passionate about the mental health space. I guess so. I've been you know doing stuff with Movember since you know since I was at the Gold Coast Titans. So over eight years now. Um, that sort of tied into the fact I lost a really good mate uh, when I was 17 due to suicide. Uh, Regan Grieve. He was. And it, a really incredible person, mate. Like we were both captains of the, you know, under 18 schoolboys side. Uh, we, we roomed together in that camp. We both got picked for the Australian side. Uh, he was the guy that everyone was respected. He was funny. He was happy. He was like a guy that everyone looked up to. And, and from the outside looking in, you would think that this guy has everything put together. And and anyway, we, we both got picked in the Australian side, uh, you know, when we were finished up high school. He ended up breaking his leg in that competition, so he couldn't go away on that six-week tour of France and England like we spoke about. He he had to stay home, and um and mate, he ended up committing suicide that following year. Sorry, due to, to that. yeah, due to um you know stuff that I had no idea about. You know, this was my roommate. This was one of my best mates in the team, and I had no idea. So after that, after that, I got that phone call in on Australia Day, twenty fifteen. I thought, mate, how can a guy that has everything together, how how could he take his own life? Like how I just didn't understand it, mate. And to be honest, I probably, I suppressed that, but internally I wanted to be that guy who my mates could talk to. Yep. So that's why I got involved with Movember. That's why I'm really conscious of, you know, any time being that guy that your mates can talk to. And, and, you know, we're in a footy environment, as you would know, like, you know, we're, we're brave and we're macho man. And, yeah. and, and from the outside looking in, you know, especially guys who are playing in the NRL, they got everything sorted. But, man, that's not the case. You know, where guys are just humans and girls are just humans like everyone else. So I thought, yeah, I want to do a deep dive into mental health and I want to do a deep dive into psychology and brain health. And I thought, well, what's the best way to do that? And how can we break down the barriers and stigmas of mental health? So I thought, well, let's start a mental health and sport podcast that talks to, you know, not only the best athletes in Australia, but also the best people. And if they can be seen being vulnerable and if they can be seen having these tough conversations, then it makes it okay for guys like you and me. Whereas like, well, if they're going through that, so can I, and I can have that conversation and make the, the response we've got is, is incredible. You know, I've, we've good. only done four now. And I haven't even lent on, you know, the rugby league circles. It, it's 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 all sports because we all deal with it. So, um, mate, it'll, it'll be it'll I, and it will be leaning. I will be obviously leaning on NRL because a lot of my mates play in the NRL. Yeah. Um, so yeah, mate. The the goal is to you know have these conversations and and hopefully break down the barriers of having a conversation and you know check in with mates and and if you can yeah you, know, you see your mate having a hard time like catch up for him with a coffee or or like mate the amount of messages that I've got where it's like. Um, like, mate, I w- went through my went and saw the psych for a first time today. Like, normalizing that conversation. Like, why why is there a stigma around going and seeing a psychologist? Like, yeah, when the mate yeah. tells me that I'm going to go see a psychologist, I was like, man, that's great. It's like you go into a physio, you go into a dentist. Like, there shouldn't be any dramas with doing that kind of stuff. So, mate, we're fresh. Uh, Keegan and Company is fresh, but it's something that I'm really passionate about. I'm I'm going to go do my uh, postgraduate in psychology at the end of this year, uh, which will be really fun. And you have a really core. Cool 
foundation knowledge of of the brain and and what i'd love to do a deep dive into brain health um okay, yeah. because obviously you know with the concussion yeah, back yeah. as well so mate that's how it sort of kicked off and yeah i'm excited for it going forward well listeners after this podcast check out keegan and company <laughs> and uh have a listen to that one on apple and spotify um yeah no it's a great listen we'll We'll wrap things up with the set of six, uh, the personality sort of questions. Um, outside of rugby league and pro- probably surfing, I guess, what, what's your favourite sport? Um, favourite sport? Uh, mate, I've been doing a lot of jiu-jitsu training, actually, okay. to be honest. that's a, It's a great way to get that competitive atmosphere without getting hit in the head. Yeah. So, but I've been doing a lot of jiu I'm actually about to go to jiu-jitsu at the uh, training this afternoon. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, probably jiu-jitsu. Ah, nice. Is there a chance of representing at a higher level? Uh- yeah, well, mate, I've done two competitions, uh, actually. So uh, I did two competitions, one a couple of months ago and then one earlier on this year. So, yeah, got got the gold for both of them, okay. just in the white belt. I'm only yeah. fresh. so yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it's a great way to learn. Um, it's a great way to test myself. But, yeah, I, I reckon I'll, I'll do a deep dive into Dewey over the next couple of years. Yeah. Ah, nice. So all, all the best with that one. Uh, now, favourite holiday destination? Mate, I just got back from uh, Italy a couple months ago. So uh, I did a couple, I did a month over there, predominantly solo, but with I caught up with some friends and family over there. And, mate, I was in Italy for, yeah, a good week. So uh, at the yeah. moment, it's probably Italy. Yeah. 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 Nah, that's on my list as well to get over there. Um, well, who would be the most famous person you'd love to meet and have a chat with? Most famous person uh, for your podcast, perhaps maybe. Oh, you know, yeah. Who, who, yeah. Who would you like um, to meet? Someone that you've never met before. I don't know, mate. There's probably there's there's so many. Like there's so many. Um, mate, probably probably someone overseas. Probably like a Tom Brady or like a LeBron. Probably like a LeBron James. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like those guys operate on a different level, and to have the chance to spend an hour with them on a podcast, that would be pretty. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. Uh, which three former, I oh, would say, Gold Coast and Parramatta players wouldn't you want to be stuck on a deserted island with, and why? <clears throat> um, Nathan Peets, <laughs> Parramatta and Gold Coast Titans player. Yeah, good combination. Yeah. He's, good com- he's the biggest pest. Love him. <laughs> Love him to pieces, but he's the biggest pest. Uh, so I couldn't live on a desert island with him. Um <clears throat> I feel like Ray Stone, while I love him and I was rooming with him on the in Para, I feel like you just want to wrestle and you just want to, you know, fight the whole time. So I, I couldn't That'd be handy like, for your jujitsu. And mate, actually, he does a bit of mixed martial arts as well, off to the side in, in off season. So okay. he'd be a good, he'd, be, he'd actually yeah, be a good training partner. And one more, um, oh, I'm not sure who would be. Um, Re- Regan Regan Campbell Gillard, I love, and actually no, he'd be a laugh. I'd say he's he's like grubby, like he's a, he's a, he's just a mess, but he's he's actually pretty funny. So maybe not him, maybe like a, I don't know, Jack Stockwell, <laughs> little Jack okay. Stockwell from from Gold Coast Titans. I played a couple of games with him, and uh, he's I roomed with him a couple of times, and he always sleeps his stuff everywhere. Yeah, so fair enough. Those, yeah. uh, what's your specialty dish in the kitchen or on the barbecue? Mate, if I could do like a rack of lamb with crispy potatoes and a Greek salad, like that's that's me. I Beautiful. could have that for that's my death day meal. Nice. And the last one, who's your favourite musician or uh, band or solo artist? Favourite? Um, oh, mate, there's so many. There's so many. <laughs> I love the old school guys like okay, – yeah. like, Queen and, and David Bowie, but then even I've got more recently into like Nick Bryan and and, and Luke Holmes and yeah, guys like that. Man, there's too many to pick from. Did you manage to make it to Luke Holmes last week? I didn't. I didn't, mate. I didn't. I I, I saw all the photos yeah. of the boys having a few beers on stage. Yeah, it was very popular that one. What's your favorite yeah. Queen song? Uh, favorite Queen song. Um, don't stop me now, probably. Yeah. Nah, that's nice, nice. Well, Keegan Hipgrave, thank you very much for joining me today on the Paracay podcast. I could have spoken for longer. We might have to do a, a part two down the track, but nah, thank you very much. And you always got time for the fans. Every time I see you at the games, you always saying hello and stuff and that and having a chat. So 
now we'll have to do it next year. But um, all the best with your Keegan and Company podcast and also keep up the great work that you're doing at Waterbility. So Keegan Hipgrave, thank you very much for joining me today. Troy, thanks so much for having me, mate. I really appreciate it. How you going, hey, mate? Are you a Paracay podcast listener? I am, bro. Okay. It's a great podcast. Everyone tune in. Wait, are you Welcome back and thanks for listening to Keegan and his rugby league story. There were certainly some great yarns there. Let me know which one your favourite one was. There were some great stories, no doubt. Uh, thank you very much, Keegan, for coming on the podcast and I hope to catch up again with you soon. Uh, as I said, you always got time for fans at games and I've always enjoyed our little catch-ups as well. So, And also, keep up the great work that you're doing with uh, What Ability. Um, I know they really enjoy that and it's great to see getting the, the disabled people out there and enjoying life and sporting events and uh, you're doing a great job there. So... Uh, Keep that one up, and also, listeners, check out Keegan's podcast, Keegan and Company, which you can find on Apple and Spotify as well, so subscribe to that one. Some great interviews there, especially the one with Mac Horton, that was a great one, the first one up there, Uh, but there's a few more coming out as well. There's been an, another three episodes since the Mac Horton one, and there will be some more coming out as well. So subscribe to that one as well, as well as the Paracave podcast as well. Subscribe to that one. Uh, a quick shout out to the sponsors of the podcast, major sponsor, Jack's Pale Ale, exclusively available at Parramatta Leagues Club. Perfect for that Eels fan or beer lover. All you need to do is drop into the club shop and get some today. Perfect for that Eels fan or beer lover. Um, if you if you if you know someone who is a Eels fan or even a beer lover, Father's Day is coming up, so drop into the club shop, grab some Jack's Pale Ale. Uh, also, keep an eye on the social media channels as well and see what's happening at Parramatta Leagues Club each and every week. Bo Cook from Loan Market, thank you once again for your support of the podcast. His number is 0401 213 236. Get in contact with him for a free chat and see how he and his team can help you Get on top of your home loan and find you that best deal. Also, keep an eye out him on for uh, Instagram, Bo the Broker. He's got some great tips on how to save money uh, and also about home loans as well. So keep an eye, uh, subscribe to him as well. Follow, give Bo a follow on Instagram as well. Uh, Shannon Cooney from Glenmore Park Realty. If you're looking to buy or sell in the Glenmore Park and Penrith LGA areas, then get in contact with Shannon. He is your man. He is the five-star real estate agent that you are looking for. Contact Shannon on 0421 588 445. Seven days a week, anytime. Give him a call and get in contact with him he is the best in the business btzd teamwear head to www.btzd.com.au check out their range of team sportswear and they might be able to do something for you so check that one out uh official apparel po- partner of the Paracave podcast also, the official media partner of the podcast, the Parramatta Times. For all your local Parramatta news, simply head to www.parramattatimes.com.au. Now, I just want to thank you guys, the listeners, for listening to last week's episode with Andrew Walker, the interview style podcast. Jeez, it was a really interesting podcast. I thought it was anyway. Uh, a player, the first Indigenous Australian to go from rugby league internationals to uh, rugby union internationals playing for the Wallabies. So, uh, a huge honour there. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what your favourite part of that podcast was uh, in the comments section of anywhere you see 
and this podcast broadcast or on Apple or Spotify, please leave a five-star rating and review and a comments as well about the podcast. The Paracave Podcast merchandise is available as well now, so you can get a Paracave Podcast hat at the reasonable price of $10 now. That exciting new podcast logo on there. All you need to do is just send an email to www.theparacavepodcast at yahoo.com. Order one now. Ten dollars plus postage and hand handling. Um, post it up on socials. Let me show show me that you're wearing your podcast hat. Had some great pictures sent through, and some people wearing theirs are out and about. I wear mine all the time. Uh, I love it. So thank you very much for the support. Uh, I hope you really enjoy the content that comes out each week as well. So. Um, don't forget to email the podcast if you would like that hat as well. Or you can send me a message on one of the social media channels as well. I'll endeavor to get back to you ASAP. Now, I've also got, I think it's two, two large and one XL shirt left in the BTZD polo shirts paracave podcast polo shirts so again if you would like those they are only 25 dollars each so if you would like to purchase one of those just send me a message on uh, one of the social media channels or you can email the podcast your size and how many you would like and yeah 25 dollars each plus postage and handling um and i can get them out to you as well so thank you very much once again for listening to the podcast i really love the support i hope you're enjoying the tipping podcast the chats i have with the duck man on pulse fm each week i hope you enjoy those ones as well uh let me know subscribe to the podcast uh leave a five star rating and review Look, have a great week as best you can. Enjoy your football last regular round of the season this week when this podcast comes out on Thursday. So uh, last weekend of regular style football before we hit the semifinals, which will be the great part of the season. Unfortunately, Parramatta's not there this year. So I will be cheering for the Warriors, I think. I'd love to see them get up and win their first competition. So there you go. There's a little bit of a scoop of who I will be going for in the competition in September when the footy is the best football you can see. So on that charge to the semifinals. So speaking of the semifinals, I am hoping to get a big-name guest to give me some insight into the games each week. So stay tuned to that one. Um, He helped me out last year, so hopefully this year he can do the same as well. So um, give me some really good insight into the semifinals week to week. Enjoy your footy. Enjoy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there on Sunday. Enjoy your day um, as well. Follow the social media channel, the Paracave Podcast social media channels. You'll see some interesting content being posted up there and also who is coming up next on the podcast, Instagram and Facebook, the Paracave Podcast. Thank you very much for listening. But to sign off the show, and as I always say, the Paracave Podcast, by the fan, for the fans. Go Para! Thank you for listening to another episode of the Paracay Podcast. See you next time.